Hi, good afternoon. This is Jennifer at Work a Jig. Sorry for the late start. I had a problem with my computer, of course. That always happens when something important is going on. Um, this webinar is geared for pretty much people that are starting up in Work a Jig that may be project managers and want to get a little bit more of an explanation on how to adjust and customize some of the screens and dashboards that you see to make it easier for the creatives, basically, or PMs even. So we're going to go over really two parts today. The first part is going to be customizing some dashboards, basically a little bit on the sales, a little bit of, uh, and mostly on the PM and the project dashboards, and some things you may or may not know of how to make it maybe easier or only show them things that you would like them to see. Uh, maybe not some information might not be privy to them, so you don't want them to be always accessing all of that. The second thing we're going to talk about then is going with custom menus. Now, I'm not that is not something that we usually bring up during training. So I'm a trainer here. My name is Jennifer Broadwater, if I didn't mention that. And I've been here over five years. And it's just one of the things that we don't always touch on when we're going through training because we only have limited time. So custom menus have been absolutely fabulous for some of my clients who want to minimize what their creatives see. So throughout the day, they don't have a bunch of extra things to think about. Who needs extra, right? I don't need extra when I'm at work. I need exactly what I need and that's it. So um, here's what we're going to talk about and I'm going to get started with going um, into my account. Well, so the first thing that we're going to go over is for you that are admin managers and um, we're going to take a look at we're going to go across, basically start with the sales and go over here first. So not everybody utilizes our CRM. However, there's a couple of things that I want to point out on your sales dashboard. So a lot of times when you're doing CRM, you're working in opportunities and we're not really talking about opportunities today. We're looking more at the sales dashboard. So the sales dashboard is probably underutilized for a couple of reasons, because a lot of people don't even know that, you know, to click on it to see what's in there. Mostly I see it as, hey, these are the stages that you have in your opportunities where are we at monetarily for each one of those you know how you know how close are we to getting those signed contracts and what is the monetary value for all of those sales that are hopefully coming in so on the left side we're gonna um you know you can see those already setting up this page is super simple for the most part there's only two things that you can really adjust um, one is, do you want people to be only able to see themselves on here, or do you want them to be able to see everybody? So this is really in our system settings of how to adjust this. And I'm going to show you where sales goals comes from, because I would say nine out of 10 people don't even know where those come from. So don't worry if you don't know them. Um, so but first, so a lot of people are like, well, I want my employees to be able to see their own sales goals, but I don't want them to come in and see Hugh Jaglin's sales goals because that's personal, right? So this one would allow me at all at once to see what everybody's sales goals are, right? Versus, actually, it's probably not going to change because I don't think I have any goals for Hugh, but I'm not sure. Um, versus just seeing my own sales goals. And this is per month. So if I wanted to, as a, an employee, manager not let other people see that what other people's goals are it's in your system settings here and there is just a it's just literally a show or don't show other people's sales so if you unclick this you would not get that drop down you would only see yourself now of course you as a manager you're probably in some type of group that's you know you might be a work magic administrator or something else but you may be only wanting to adjust this just for the sales right? So what you would do is you would pick this one, you would override the company settings, and you would de-click this other people. And that just to ensure that, you know, it's none of their business. But you probably want to see it, so don't adjust that, right? Okay, so now the second thing on the sales dashboard that most people have blank is sales goals. And I want to just talk about where that comes from. So if you did not already know, if you have access to your employees, so we're going to go admin manager, employees. No, I'm not saving those changes. 
And in every single employee, whether you like it or not, their sales goals. And I would say almost all everybody has them blank and they'll just say, add new sales goals here. That is what pulls through to that page. So if I make a new goal here, and we'll just say for 2024, you could put one total here, but you can go across the board and say, you know, however much you want for each month. And it's just going to add them together. And obviously I'm not going to take the time to do all 12 months, but that adds it. This would be the sales goal. And then you would, that would display as soon as there's information for Audrey, if she was to open an opportunity. So those sales goals, obviously on the opportunities, if you weren't um, sure where those come from, they're the goals that are in here um, under the opportunity amounts right here, revenue, okay? All right, so that, again, I know that's probably not a lot of people use that area, but it is important to note that, you know, let's make it as user-friendly for your employees as possible and give them some good information that they may be interested in to see again. Um, did I meet my goal that month? You know, these are going to be for months. This, oh, question, good, um, or quarters. There is one question. How did you get to the sales dashboard? Aha, good question. So. Um, and I did go quite fast. Not everybody has access to it. And if it's something that you think that you need, it is um, just basically a, a security right to see the sales dashboards. So it's from your salesperson icon if you have it. And then it's just the one that's obviously a sales dashboard, right? Again, you may have already been restricted if you're in this um, webinar and you don't see this readily and you do want it, you would probably talk to one of your administrators and say, hey, this would be nice to see. And, and not that this is a little off topic, but if you don't have this one, this is another one that's nice to see if you have it, your sales graphs, um, because you'll be able to get a lot of data about your opportunities and leads and stuff like that on that page. So if you're not seeing sales, if you do opportunities and you're not seeing sales dashboard and sales graphs, get with them, you know, your supervisors to make sure that you can have that added on. I believe those are just a security right. That's it. Okay, there's one other question. So as an admin, the sales dashboard view, that's the one, that's just what we're in. There's really, this is it. Like you, there's no customization to us of more things you can add. Like someday maybe, um, you know, there's not like um, some of the graphs where you can add graphs and this is it. And the only thing, you know, you can favorite an opportunity. That's ex exactly what it is you're on your opportunities page and you click the little star and you can add that this is not uh, a changeable thing unfortunately maybe someday in the future we are but it's only going to tell you this month and this quarter and what was neglected after certain you know if you were doing opportunities and you hadn't touched them if in case you guys know what this is um so if you do opportunities and you're having you're having conversations and nothing's been touched in the last 30 days you're going to um get you know, how many weren't touched there. So basically this page stays as it is. There's other stuff we can do, you know, in some of this other areas that you can change, but this isn't one of them. You definitely can change stuff with the sales graphs and add more sales graphs and customize what people see. But the sales dashboard, it's like, it is what it is. All right, let me see if we have any more questions. Do you need people to, uh, to set up people as sales person to show in the drop down menu? Um, no. So you could have people in and we'll we'll look take a look at that because that's a good question. It's typically you are signing into another account. Sorry, I don't know what I just touched and I don't want to change my password or anything. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know where that came up from. Um, in your security settings, just because you're not in maybe the sales account manager, um, maybe I don't know what you could call them, whatever you want, but I think we have a designated one called sales. I could be a project manager and still have all of the um, sales icons and stuff to view today's sales and today's graphs, you know, so you're going to be able to be in any group and still be able to see that all those icons, as long as you, you know, put in sales dashboard or whichever it is. So whichever dashboard, you know, they're usually named dashboard. I, Pretty much if you just come into this dashboard area and it will tell you all the different dashboards and which ones you have and don't have, okay? So again, it, you don't have to be named sales in order to get the rights to see the sales dashboards. All right, 
So that was all for the sales area. Again, the customization for that is pretty straightforward because there isn't a whole lot to customize on that. Now we're gonna take a look more openly at the PM dashboard. In the PM dashboards, we have two things that we're gonna talk about. One, the actual PM dashboard, and then go through some of the projects and the project dashboard, right? So the PM dashboard, a lot of people never go to this because again, very underutilized because a lot of times people don't know what to do with this. So you can customize this again for your creatives by deciding what things you want them to see in these sections. I would say if you're a project manager, 99% of the time, nobody's going to limit. Oh yeah, you shouldn't see project summary. Like, yeah, you're a project manager. You should probably see all of these items in here. Maybe you don't want them to see billing information, but typically, yes, you do want them to see billing information too. So again, in your system settings, this is where you would be able to go in and, and make the changes for this specific group, maybe the creatives. Now, would the creatives even have access to this? Probably not most likely it would be project managers. Again, it's just a click of a button to say, I wanna override and decide the people that are in this security group, these are your security groups, should or should not see these items here, right? And you can, and by unclicking them, you can. So all those items are just the things that go across here, which are the different um, ways that you can look at your, what's going on with your projects. While we're on this page, I'm not going to change anything on there. Um, just note a couple of the things that people will always ask. I mean, this isn't really pertinent to setting up or anything is like, what do these things mean? You know, what do these pro total projects mean? Active project, new projects. If you ever look at the show description, just so you guys know, you know, based on what dates, custom dates that you may put in here, if it's this month, it's I, you know, I just have it from November to, to yesterday or whatever. Um, this is going to tell you exactly what these are. Um, are these printable? You can print out a picture of them, yes, but they're really not like reports, okay, as far as like a reportable. You would really want to use a custom report or one of your other reports um, to get that information. Oh, I have a question from one of our users. Okay, is there a way to click and see data? Do you need to set up people as salespeople? Oh, we asked that one. Is there a way to click and see the data? The information that's provided in here is only, a, it's going to just be a hover over. So I can see there was one actual hour on autobiography. You know, it's going to give you the pie chart information as you hover until it gets too small. I think at a certain point, if the slice is too small and if you didn't have, like this is hours by project type. Okay, I'm lazy. There's not a lot of project types. So you're seeing a lot of hours there, but it's, it's not like I can dig into any of these items in here, but that's a good question. So it's hover and see, and that's, you know, do I have divisions and where is my hours going to in each of these? And they would uh, billings by client. Oh, I bill a lot to zigzags. Oh, I'm purgatory. All right. That's, those are great questions. But um, again, this dashboard is really already set up for you. You don't have a, any ability to go and like add new things to it. You're really only able to customize. Can I take off things for people to not be able to see them? Yes you know, what would I really take off? I don't know. Do I need to see, you know, you're, you're going to be able to see only what you're privy to. I mean, if it's billings by client, you're not going to see every client in the whole world. If you're in a group that doesn't have access to that certain client, you're not going to be able to see them on here. That's, that's the only thing that it would be limited to. So you don't have to worry about that. All right. More questions. All right. Uh, is there a way to click and see? Your screen is off to the right. I don't know what that means is left. Yes, this screen should be on the left. Um, that's, I don't know any other way it should be. So when you click on salesperson, I mean, project manager and then PM dashboard, it's not gonna create a full screen. It should only be on the left side and it has a scroll. And this whole side is blank. That is correct. That is the way it is. If yours looks different than that, let me know because that's the way it should look. Um, it was the broadcast only. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no problem. All right, so going on, dashboards. So let's look at the projects. There's two places we're going to take a look at now. One is your project's main page, and we're going to talk about um, 
you know, what do you want to reflect for to make it easiest for people? Okay, when I look at my main page, because I'm an admin, it's creative, a gigantic mess, right? You have this, you can scroll over forever and see figures of all kinds of junk that you don't want to clutter up your creatives page and have them looking at all this. And some of this information is just, they don't care, right? Let's not do that to them. So you can, by default, um, manage what they would see in this page. Well, one, you could clean it up for everybody. So everybody knows if you don't already in your more is a system settings. And I can make this page available differently for different groups. So I can say, oh, I want the creatives again, just like before, to have a different view than I have. And I would come over here and edit my column sets to restrict what they're going to see. So by editing the columns, they don't need to see 5,000 things that we have access to, right? You may be only wanting them to see the project name and maybe how many actual hours there are in the project and stuff like that. I mean, you can get really crazy and obviously and add all, all of these, but if you want to make it specific when tone it down, some of the things that I would suggest having is, well, the account manager, if you guys do use allocated hours versus actual hours, that's a good way for them to see if they're reaching their budget, you know, if they allocated the hours. And if a lot of clients use custom fields, if you have custom fields that you put there for a reason, then go ahead and, eat, you know, I almost, this first draft do is like super important to many, many of my clients. Well, that's just the custom field I added. Um, what's great about that, you know, you can change it right in, in the grid it's from here. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, let me go back to open that. Sorry. System settings and down here. Right. So going through here, I have a bunch of custom fields, obviously, but you probably would want to have some other information on here. Like I said, if you budget hours, if you, from an estimate, your current budget hours are super important to have in there. A lot of people are now using divisions. So you might want to add that. Um, one thing that I would also add for has estimates. And the reason this is, is at a glance, a lot of people will be like, did we do an estimate yet? Well, do you really want to do three clicks in to see um, if an estimate was created on there? So if you are a client that are doing estimates, if it has estimate, have a column on there for it. It's quite easy to see. And then you could, you know, really kind of, click the top of the line and see all the ones together that don't have estimates that you need to still build. Um, product name, I'm sorry, project color, no project for, just making sure I didn't miss any of the really, project status obviously is pretty important. And a lot of people will group this page by project status um, for your creatives. Sometimes you give them the flexibility that they can make changes when they open this page, right? So they can go to their, so it's very different they can go to their views, I'm sorry, they can go into their display options and they can kind of make some changes to how they wanna see this page. Right now, I think mine are grouped by products. That was a new, in case you guys didn't know, this is new, one of my clients asked for it, um, that they, they were big on products. I don't use a lot of products, so I have only have like two, but um, they wanted to be able to group by product because they use the same products across the board for each of their clients. So just note that if you hadn't seen that one before, that's new. I personally like to do it by project status. And the and for, you know, you guys have that flexibility when you change it to project status, um, I can see them, oh yeah, this is my design phase. And these are all the projects in that design phase for that status or develop or which, whichever. Um, just so that, just so you guys know, that's something that you, your employees can change for themselves in their display options. Every employee has display options. Only admins will have the system settings. And again, if you want to customize what people see when they first open this up. Now, in addition, if you have not already, um, if you don't have anything in the right side here, that means you have don't have your own column sets. So if you didn't want to take the time to customize each, you know, each one of your security groups out, you may just take the time to make a couple of different um, different layouts. So I have a different ones where I have my special one and you'll see, oh, it's very short. So this might be the one that I would have my creatives use. 
and you can pull this down. When you close this page, it should come back to the same one, right? So I only really care about to do's. And, it, and this is another one that if you guys don't already have this on here, if you are using to do's, it is really great because it will take you right to the to do board so you can see your open to do's right there without having to like hunt and peg for them, right? That's awesome. Um, and I'm going to show you how to make these. So if you didn't already have these, I also have one for specifically for PMs. So if you allow everybody to see everything and, and but you still want to make a, a couple of different layouts that people can have different access to, that's going to be in your more key and it's under edit column sets. So um, this one, you can make as many different column sets. So you saw I had Jennifer and you had PM view. So all it is is deciding to make one more for maybe for your um, creatives to be able to see that hey, let's make it a creative one that's very short and sweet and they don't have to look through a bunch of stuff that's very confusing, right? Um, you could lock a column count, you don't have to. Once you do that, then you can come through and decide, it automatically is gonna put like all of them in and then you can decide who has the access, but you could be like, well, they don't need these. You know, you just can come through and take off the ones you don't want which I'm obviously not going to actually look at all of these and tell you which ones are important for you because yours are probably going to be different. But after you get down to what you feel is great, then you can decide all security groups for add. Oh, by default, all security groups are added when you add a new column set. So then you can come through and say, no, we only want the creatives to have this one. So you take it out off of everybody else. Oops, not the creative. How I said that, oh, keep that one on <laughs> and take it off of everybody else. So, right, I can come through here. And then once you do that and you have this set, then you're going to be able to have that drop down for those people to be able to see the creative one that we just made, which is still awfully long, but you get my drift, right? All right, so there's a question. Hold on. Oh, how did you get the projects page with the more, the more button to edit the columns? Okay, I believe the very first time, if you've never seen this and you don't have this over here, that's a really good question because I think the very first time, because once you have it on here, it stays. But I believe the first time you need to go to system settings, you need to scroll somewhere. So there was one that says edit column sets. Okay, maybe it's not system settings. Give me a second. I can't remember. There's, it's like hidden. The first time you see it, it's like, is it display options? Mm, I think it goes away after you do it, you guys. You'll have to check. I thought it was in the system settings and it says edit column sets, but because I've already in, enabled it, I can't, don't seem to see one that says it, it was like a, it would be down like on the side. Um, if you still can't get to it and you can't find it after this call, um, I'll go back and look for it. How did you get to the projects page you're on? Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Most of you guys, if you haven't already um, made adjustments to your page, this is what the main page looks like when you very start for start working with Jig when we train you guys. A lot of times it has already been adjusted for you, but I left mine exactly like this. And we're gonna get into, in a few minutes, we're gonna get into how to actually change this page to look way different than this. But how did I get to that? I just went to my project manager and then to the projects. So somehow you should have, everybody here should definitely have access to projects. <laughs> um, and my, like I said, your project main page may look different then my main page, I just have a lot on it, um, but that's really how you get to it. Is there a further question I can help? Okay, got it, okay, great. All right, so again, don't worry if your page doesn't look exactly like mine. There's just some, some things I like to have on this page. Again, easy to access your deliverables. If For those that you are using deliverables, having it a jump right from this page instead of going into the project to get to them, this is going to open again the deliverables board to see that. So I like to have anything that's a shortcut on here, right? Um, all right, so that's your main PM, you know, project dashboard. Then 
there's also inside the project, there's a dashboard, as you everybody probably knows. So we'll just pick one of these and have a quick peek. So your dashboard in here can make some customizations for your creatives that may or may not help them, will hopefully help them. So again, most of those decisions are in your more key. So we have some system settings in here about how to set up this page to work right. You're gonna probably notice that my page is gonna look a little bit different because I've shoved some things onto the left side here that most of you have in here. So like most people that have deliverables, your deliverables are right smack dab in the middle of this page. I like my deliverables on the left and why? Because if I have them on the left, it takes me to guess what? To the deliverables board. Mm -hmm. So having um, a lot of deliverables and you know how it takes up more and more space on this page as you have more and more stuff, right? And um, you can move some of that stuff and offboard it to the left for the creatives or just everybody. So again, the system settings is going to allow you to come down to the creatives and say, hey, I want to override what um, the setup is that I display and make it different for just this group. And you even have the ability to see who's in this group. Oh, look, those are my people. OK. Um, but this is where I'm getting to for this information. So uh, we'll start talking about, do you want things on the right? So anything that's on the right is on the middle of that page that's right behind here, this, this area. So if I say I don't want it on the right, so see how it has daily feed on the, on the right right now and everybody can see the daily feed. If I don't want that to be cluttering up my page for my people, I can take that off. Maybe I, my very unuseful burn charts I don't wanna see. Um, maybe I don't care about my sales conversations. Just you can come over and customize what things you don't want them to see on that side. I want to just show you for a second. So one of the uh, things that we do think that a lot of creatives don't care about, <laughs> unfortunately, is that like the project profitability, maybe you guys don't even have that on, but the project profitability or the project snapshot on this page is also found in your system settings again. So it's down here. So these two, they are always on the right side. So you don't, you know, so if you want to be able to see those, this would be more two things that a PM would need to see, but maybe not the creative that is the copywriter doesn't really care how, pro how much profit they made on this right so far, right? Also, the spec sheets could be on the left or the right. My spec sheets um, are right on the left. Again, taking me well, I have no specs on this one, but if I did, it would just take me over to the board of a spec sheets versus that. So sometimes it's just d depending on who needs to see what, you're going to make all of those changes inside of your system settings for the group that you want. And then note that that group, oops, the creatives, you have to always override and decide where do you want to see them and how you want them to see them. If you don't, and you're just thinking you're here today, let's just change it for everybody. That's absolutely fine. Just don't go into that specific, go to the system settings and then just change it here. This changes it for everybody, right, at once. I mean, like a lot of people don't even use tracking forms. This is a newer feature and I do want to mention this because like half my clients probably don't know about it. They close projects and when you close a project, if you didn't know this, this billing goes away. And sometimes you want to see what invoices were on a closed project because you may still be interested in that information, we now have the ability to show the billing for the closed project. So if you, when I say closed project, it means if you guys actually close your projects in the, in the settings where you should be doing this in the accounting and hit this closed, if I hit this closed, billing tab goes away. And you can still find this information in other places, of course. It's just a lot of people find it convenient because they're still piddling around in this project for some reason to be able to see it there. All right. Other thing, okay, so that's really all the project dashboard from here. Um, the same thing on the schedule, I would just kind of call this your dashboard for the your schedule. There is a lot of things that you can customize. Oops, I wanted to actually get, no, nope, this one. <laughs> Wait, no, I just want to get rid of, there we go, and then get rid of that one. Okay, um, this could be, oh, I have a question, let's see view. I have a hand raised, but I don't have a question on it. 
uh, did I miss something? If, if I missed something, um, I don't know why that came up with the hand raised. All right, so your main project um, schedule dashboard can also be changed to make things easier for you. A couple of things people don't typically know is maybe sometimes you want people to be able to see um, priority. Now, priority is a new feature um, that used to only say high, low, and medium. Well, we now allow you to change priorities and make them customized to what you want to say here. So, you know, this is in relation to this administration tax. I'm sorry, I really didn't have, I don't know why I picked this like project without any tasks on it. Okay, but let me add one more. I feel, it feels very naked. Normally you would have people on all of these. Um, so on this task, she's gonna have a task card, right? Um, a priority, like I said, they all default to medium. If you ever looked at the task card, they all say medium to begin with. Well, now you can customize, and I wanna show you where you can do this, and I can make my own, you know, like this is maybe a not important job. Um, you know, you can, to do this today, you wanna make sure that that person that I haven't assigned does it today. All right, and allocate her some hours, save, right? So this may be something that may be interest to you guys because this shows up on the task card instead of where the task card says medium. I wanna show you where this is and I'll show you where to set this up and why you would want this on here. Uh, you might not want it as a column, but you can at least be able to use priority to, um, you can set it up in, I think it's in this area also. There's a place where you can do it. I just like it right on the main screen because you saw how easy it is a Dropbox to say, hey, that. So if I go over to my creatives today, um, mine all say whip, whip, whip. This is not, this is not the right kind of project um, today or else. So if you wanted to add this as an, a feature, into work a jig because if you looked at yours right now, I can guarantee they'll all say medium because that's what they do. Instead, I want to show you, you guys can change this yourself. If you have access to admin manager, system setup. Um, now I have to actually think, where did I put this? Task priorities, there. Under global lists is task priorities. So if you go into yours, they'll say medium, or something, I don't know what the other ones are because I've changed them, <laughs> but I know they all default to the one. One has to be a default. So whatever one you want them all to fall into, it will be the default if you change it. And then you can like, you know, insert as many rows as you want um, and call them whatever you want. But sometimes that may help organize the day. Now this doesn't do anything as far as like, um, you could pull a report on task priority as a course because you can pull a report on pretty much anything, but it has nothing to do with um, bucketing of the actual tasks that you do from your resource manager assignment management screen. So just note that if you're using that, uh, I probably wouldn't use task priority also, but if you are a client that actually buckets um, through this way where you're like pulling and dragging and putting things in when per week of what people should do. I wouldn't also not use the task party because that could get really confusing really quick if I put next week and then I put, you know, do this today, you know, then the person's going, what are you talking about? All right. So let me go back to this project. All right. So customizing this screen to what you want your employees to look at again, is one of those things where I can do it and it edit column sets, which I'll show you the different layouts I have in a second, or I can just go to my system to settings and decide what I want to display for a specific group. Again, mostly we're talking about creatives. Do they need what things are really important to them and what aren't? So I'm coming to click on that override again, just like before, and then I can start editing what columns I want them to see versus everybody else. Okay, so when you edit the columns, um, again, it's just like the page before where you have all of these. And then just remember, you can also change your display order. So yeah, this is like crazy amounts. You know, if I wanted this up here, you know, status comments or whatever on here and then remember hit save and then display. Okay, that's going to change it for the company settings. Now, um, what was I gonna say next? 
Oh, is there a question I missed? Hold on a second. Yeah, uh, you are not able to remove. Here's a question. Are you able to remove the task priority if we're not currently using it? No, it just sits there as medium. You can't like, you know, now that you asked that, I've never actually thought that I could, act, let's check that just in case I'm wrong. <laughs> Cause like, I don't know if I can delete all of them. Task priorities. Oh, I can't, you can't delete it if it's being used. So I would guess no, because all of yours, at least one would, they would all default to medium. So they're always going to say medium on there. Um. Okay, let me go back out. So you, you would have to take all the priorities. They're always going to default to medium. You could take off all the rest, but they're always going to be on that card somewhere. It's just something I can't hide from um, getting you guys away from. All right, let me go back to this project. Good question, though, because I didn't know myself. All right, so just like the page before um, on the main projects page, you can have custom sets here also. And you can, I have one that, you know, I may want a specific one just to show my client that doesn't have all the all zillions of things on it. I might want to have one that I could just print out this schedule for my client. You know, like, I don't know if any of you guys use these features, but I can like actually print the schedules, right? And this is all I want them to see. So I might want to do something like this. And then I can email this over to the client. When was it due? Maybe I put some comments about what's happening on it. It's a nice feature that we have that <coughs> highly underutilized. But again, you can make as many of these just like before. It's the same thing. You're going to go to your more key. And you, if you don't already have edit column sets here, again, I think it's a I think it's in the system settings, but once you initiate it, you don't see it. Oh, here, it, it is in mine. Here, edit column sets. It's, if it's not on, you just need to click it on here. And then once you have that, then this extra thing that says edit column sets here shows up. So that doesn't show up unless you have that checked under the system settings. So again, it's the same kind of thing where I'm like, I might want a special one, a set for it to make it easier for my creatives. I'm going to call it creatives again. When you do it, it's going to show everything. You're going to take the access away or change the access to make sure that the creatives do have the access to it, right? And then you're going to start coming in and saying, nope, they don't need to see these things, right? Blah, blah, blah. Get rid of too much stuff. Too much, too much. I have way too much, right? And then that's all it is. I might, oh. And then now I have one called creatives and now it's down to this, right? So hopefully that makes it easier for them to be able to focus on what they need to know about the project without seeing everything. Like most of the time, like honestly, creatives don't care about tracking budgets. That's something for PMs to know if you're tracking budgets or not, right? They need to know how many days they got to do it and how many hours and what it's called. Um, next question. Wow, lots of questions today. Can you walk through the client facing timeline real quick again, the client facing timeline? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, I'm glad that somebody thought that was interesting. My anonymous attendee. All right. So I made one for specifically called for the client. So all it was a data. So again, it was just I edited a call, made a column set that I wanted to specifically have to give to my clients um, on here. So I don't want them to see everything. I just need these five columns. So all it is is under the print key, once you devise this, and if you're on that one, then you need to be able to decide, do they need the GANs? I have one that says print client schedule. Um, they're just going to give you, you no know, print schedule grid. They're going to give you different options of how you want this to look. I don't, you know, have the greatest, you know, what, when, Obviously, they wouldn't need to know about my to-dos, but again, you're going to have to play with this because there's a lot of different ways I can print all the task assignments. And, you know, it's to me, it's great because a lot of times clients need to know that's not so great. That's just like each assignment on one page, which obviously you wouldn't want to do one page per assignment. So you, what you need to do is be on the way that you want to see it for your client after you decide, yeah, my client needs to know when, when are these due dates or when are these tasks coming up or something. It kind of lets um, you, once you do do the print, do do, that's probably terrible English. Um, let's do this one. 
da, da, da. okay status days do this is a different one this isn't the same one that was that i had just set up but once you do this you can email this directly to your client from workmajig just from the email key here where you can download and send it as an attachment so something to play with a lot of clients, again, don't ever touch this button because you're not typically printing, but there's some helpful information um, when you set up one that's specific to people that need to see where are you at with this project, right? Don't bug me. Let me tell you and call me tomorrow, right? Okay, let me make sure if this is a, yeah, that's all the questions on that. All right, what else am I doing? Honorable mention. Hold on one minute, so... Calm sets, did that, did that, that. Okay, and I think I already mentioned before that I, using some of these items on the left just cleans up the stuff that's in the right, right? Also, um, we did a new addition in the last several months. Now, if you're hunting down who did something, you can now select the specific user. I don't, you know, and then I don't think there's any other users but me. Well, no, there's not. But you could sp do a specific user and see, you know, what they did. Well, I guess Barry Allen did two things um, on here. You can also search words, which is awesome now because somebody might be just looking for something that says promo, right? And then, oops. So all the ones that say promo on it come up. I guess I should have done a different word like uh, project. I'll take Barry out though because that doesn't make any sense. So every time project is listed, you know, so we did these because a lot of times you don't want to scroll through. You guys may have thousands and thousands of lines. I don't, but it's a lot easier to investigate on your daily feed now that we have this. And if you guys have Macs, um, just another thing to note, it's not a, I, something I just learned. Command F. Let me see where my command F. I don't know if you can see this, but I can now like, you can hit command F and then you can search any word you want on the page and it will um, look, it highlights it for you. I thought that was so cool. Somebody taught me that. I must be really behind the times because I never <laughs> knew about that before. Um, so if you have a Mac and you do con command F, that's awesome. All right. Now, because it's already 1120, I haven't even got to some cool stuff that I needed to get to. All right. So the last thing that we're going to go to, but it's also a big thing is actually, I'm going to skip on over to custom data sets. So in your back end, there is a way, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. So this is like, we already looked at this previously. Um, if you wanted to customize your creatives for today page, not have a ton of icons and just get to what they need to get to, I'm going to take you through how can I make this. So this is just one of my regular employees because I have a lot of famous people that work for me. Um, and inside of here, they would be have access to what they need in just a few clicks, right? They don't need to be overwhelmed with. So you get to choose when we set this up, what will it be called, what the, the picture is, what color it is. I mean, you don't have to be crazy like I am, but just to give you an idea, you can even have icons that go directly to reports. So you'll see this and I will show you that you can, and it does one little weird thing, but it's not that big of a deal. The way this is set, if I wanna go to the PL report, it does double up right here, but um, it take you can actually, take you right to that. And then when you're done looking at your PL report, you can click it and it goes away, right? So again, that's something I'll show you in a second. I think there may be another question. How did I get to the daily feed? Oh, good question. For those of you that don't know about the daily feed, the daily feed is how you spy on your employees, right? Oh, great. Um, let me go back to the projects. Let's go to a different project. All right, here's a daily feed. So you may not have daily feed. So system settings and daily feed is just one of the things that you have. You can either have it on the left over here or on the right. So you're gonna, as long as you have from the project dashboard here, the more key, and then you go to system settings. If you're not seeing the daily feed, I would guarantee you don't have these checked or at least for the group that you're in. So that adds the daily feed in and it is very helpful especially when you want to know who did it, who 
made that estimate or who screwed up this project, whatever, you know, and then you can do the whole feed or, you know, if you need it more condensed. And again, not everybody maybe needs to see the daily feed, um, but it is definitely helpful if you click that and then you can see what date every single thing that was touched when somebody moves something, marks it complete, adds somebody to there, adds a to do, it's all there. We track you in your sleep. Just kidding. All right, other question, let me see. Project which? Oh, every project here. Let's go from the top. Projects. How did I get this again? I just, I always go to my projects. You guys may go to get to projects a different way, like that. I like to just be old fashioned. I pick whatever project, doesn't matter what project you're on. Then you go to the more key from there. And that's going to get you to your system settings, which will then get you to this area here where you decide what do you need people to see. Okay. All right, hopefully that answered your question. Oh, did we say you can generate different views for different people on this level? Um, yes, so this level of, that we're looking at right now, yes. So your system settings allows me, so if I wanted to create it different for the creatives, yes. So your creatives don't have to see the, the same thing. So you can hide, oh, that's a really good, point because you can hide the daily feed from just the creatives but leave it for other people so right so if i want to uncheck these for the creatives right i can once you do that here let's just i i don't have anybody logged in as a creative but i would probably say they don't need this and they probably don't need sales stuff right when you save it what happens is you won't see it effectively because you're probably not in this group right but what will happen is when they sign in You'll always have this little check mark here to note that, hey, those people are seeing things different. So if you click on this, then you can see what things did you include for them. Okay, so this is how you would restrict. And once you have this pen here, that means you've restricted this specific group. Okay. Other questions? Oh my gosh, there's a lot of questions. I'm sorry, guys, we're probably going to be going a little bit late. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the last thing we're going to talk about to cut some of this out, um, admin manager. We're going to talk about um, how to make that screen look like Jennifer Lopez just did. All right. So that's in your system setup from the main page, admin manager system setup. And they are custom menu setup. So I already have that one for Jennifer in there. And she's a, she's my IT person. So you will can see on here what it's going to look like after we do one. But we're going to do one together for Audrey Hepburn. Okay, so you can see how to make this and what it looks like after we do it. And that will probably, that will be the last thing that we do today. And why would we do this? Why are we doing this at all? Why are we custom menu? So less is more, in my opinion. Let's not give people icons that they can't, they not be snooping around in sales or snooping around in purchasing and they don't have access to it anyway. And if they did click on it, it's just going to say, sorry, access denied, right? How many times have you seen that in your life? Um, so it's better just to clean it up and make it easy. I will tell you, though, if you make a custom one and a person doesn't, like we said here, there's this show all apps at the bottom, if you never noticed this or know what it did, because you know, if you click it, look, I can still see all the icons once again, right? So if somebody didn't like it and they're like, I want to only use this way, if they just show all apps at the bottom, they'll come back to the original way, just so you know, all right? So this is what I kind of devised just to show you what that looked like to begin with. Now, how do we change this for a person? How do we set it up? To me, it takes a lot of writing because you have to remember what things you want. So you pretty much, to me, you should have like two screens open um, because you kind of want to know what do you want that group of people to be able to see. And I'm going to go into this one because this is the one that, wait a minute, why did that not go to her? Hold on. Da, da, da. Okay, I was like, it should be blank. So when you first go into one and you've never made one before, it wouldn't have a pen and it wouldn't have anything in it because you've never done it. So you've got to decide what security group needs changed. So am I I'm only just going to change it for one person? Then after you get to that, you've kind of got to decide, well, what things do I want them to have access to? So when it says there's going to be top level items, what does that mean? Top level items are all the items that you guys have across the top of your board right now. 
So you can change the names on them, but I'm probably just going to say, well, I want them to have, you know, creative. Obviously, they need that. They probably need project manager, but maybe I'll just call it projects instead of project manager. You know, you kind of have to go through and think, what things do I want them and everyone? That's probably important. So we'll just do like everyone, projects, and creative. And then you have to decide what sub things do you want them to have inside of that? Like, do they need a creative graphs? Maybe, maybe not. Do you want their projects to be inside of there? Maybe, maybe not. Do you want them to have, you know, yours might be similarly uh, different than what I have, my person has access to right now. Um, but what your first goal is to say, what on the top level do I want them to have access to? And then it's going to ask you once we do that, what things do I want inside? So it's basically, what do I want inside this folder that people, because, you know, you always go project manager and then hit projects, right? So then that takes you to all of the projects on your projects page. So this person only has one project, lucky them, all right? All right, so the first thing we're going to do again, it's going to open up this and you're going to say, what do I want on the top? So the top is the folders. So the folders is what is going to be the menu name. So the menu name, we're just going to make this short and sweet. And it's just going to be like, we're just going to say, we do want one called creatives because that makes sense. It's going to allow you to pick a color. And if you like color, great. If not, you can leave it and you can decide, you know, uh, background. The no it doesn't let you change the font. Um, it's always white. I think it's, it doesn't let you change that. But you need to pick, pick, you know, what picture does it mean for creatives? Those look like a creative thing. So that's what I want to do. So once you hit that, it comes over to this side here. And then from there, you have to hit other stuff and you add the items that you want okay so again this is the main part and you could change it at any time and then you have to decide what items you want inside of that so because that one's highlighted so then you would come down and the creatives have a section and if you want the same creative sections like maybe I just like yeah let's not give them graphs I only want them to have today's creative and I want them, I don't want them to have projects from there. I want them to have projects from the projects icon instead. So maybe that's where I would leave it. Just that's it. Okay. Right. So again, this is now inside of this. Now, if I wanted to do uh, specifically another folder, what I say, we'll just do everyone because that's pretty common. Everyone, pick a color, the red one. Uh, well, that seems like that should have been everyone, but who cares? Okay, that's fine. So again, now inside of here, we're going to take the other stuff and we're going to add items. This is always confusing me and people always want to do it backwards. That's why I'm, hopefully it makes sense. So inside your everyone, usually these are your options for the everyone that people usually have access to. And maybe I only want people to have their timesheet. Uh, a calendar and to get to expense reports and they don't need to get to the report center or something. Maybe they don't need access to do anything like that. So those are the things that are going to be inside there. In addition, we'll do one more and then I'll show you how to put that like um, a URL inside of it. Um, so let's do the, again, one more new item menu. We'll call it projects. Oops. So again, some crazy color. Oh, and again, you, you can put projects inside here, but again, you can call these whatever you want. I just like to say, be consistent because I go into a lot of different people's accounts because I'm training you guys. And there's, if there's a, you know, PMs are looking at it, it's called projects and other people are having some other word and it can get difficult to be able to train um, your employees if you have all kinds of words going on, right? And okay. So anyways, I'll go save that one. And then we'll say add items and go down to, again, you can mix and match. I could put the report center in there and I can put some PM graphs if I wanted to and projects, we'll just say that. But then if I wanted to add a URL, shoot, I'm not in the, I have to go out to get a URL. Uh, so, sorry, we need to, Basically, you need to be in a report or something that you needed in here. So grab the URL, copy it, and then go back to that. OK. 
you would probably have two things open, unlike me who didn't think about that ahead of time. All right, here's Audrey. So we'll go into the projects. And now if we wanted to create the custom URL instead of this one, and I, I don't even know what that report was that I just did. I'll just call it a report because <laughs> I wasn't looking at what I grabbed. Yeah, all you need to do is stick the URL in there, paste it into there, can up again, some color on there and a picture and then you hit save. Okay, so now if all is well, we only change that for Audrey. So I'm going to go out of Audrey. Oh, I think there might be a question. Let me check. Can the URL be something outside the system or does it need to be a work magic link? That is a good question. I am not sure. So why don't we just add a URL that's outside of work a jig Let's see if it works. This is my picture site copy. Good question. We'll just test it on the go. <laughs> okay. Um, other stuff. Let's try a custom URL. Testing photos. Background and save. All right, we're gonna see if this works. If it doesn't, we'll cry a little. All right, who am I, Audrey? Okay, so I've just changed all these things for Audrey. We'll see what she sees. I'm gonna log out. Oh, not that person. A-U-D-R-E-Y. Okay. All right. Oops, I don't need to save that. Okay, so here's the icons, the three icons we made. Today's creative, same exact things with the only three that I wanted, and here's where our URL. So here's the report one. Pretty sure that I need to get that out of the way. Oh, that's not going to work. You know why? For me, sorry, I didn't think about it. Audrey doesn't have access to that custom report that I uh, gave her the URL to. But let's just check the testing photos. Nope, does not connect. So unless you guys can build some type of uh, thing inside of Workamajig, it's not going to be able to take you to an outside one. Oh, that's a bummer. I didn't know that. And I'm glad that we tested it, though. At least I know that. And again, don't give, try to give people access to <laughs> reports that they don't have. But typically, that's what, like like I showed you earlier, it would take you right to the report. So um, again, you can get real crazy with the names and the stuff on here, but um, try to keep it minimal for your creative so that they don't have to think about like all the different, you know, this is where you get it. Um, make it as simple as possible. All right, so before we go, our specs and URL doesn't need to be curious. Yes, Jay. Um, specific, obviously, inside, I the URL needs to be inside, and the person would have to have access to that, which that person that I just did didn't have access to that one. That's why it didn't work. So you can see that that eliminates people from getting to things that they don't want in case you make a mistake. <laughs> Okay, so again, remember, I did this, but if the person was like, mm, I hate that, they can still hit show all apps and they're back to being able to see all of them the way it was. All right, any, that is all I'm going to have to go over today. So if there is any questions, I'm going to stick around for another three and a half more minutes before I go to lunch. <laughs> uh, I'll be happy to help. And if you need further information on how to customize or you need help, obviously any of us can do a, a call with you guys. Just go to support at workamajig.com and we'd be happy to go over the details of what you need to customize for either your creatives or PMs or who, whichever group, you know, salespeople to make it more user-friendly to everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Um, and again, I said, I'll stay around for a little bit for more questions. Yes, <laughs> the calls are free. Um, when we train you guys, just in case you don't know, I mean, unless you're like somebody excessive that wants to have like a new training call every day or something like that. But yes, you're, these uh, training calls with us that are set up are absolutely free. That's part of our program. You pay for it in your monthly fees. <laughs>
Good question, though. Oh, is there another question? What do the creatives graphs do? That is a good question. Oh, let me sign out. Some I don't think Jennifer has them, but I do. Oh, I do if I know how to type. Let's see. Oh, look, they're specific to you. Billable time. Ooh, lots of billable time. Non-billable time. And they have filters on them. So like this filter. Um, okay, this one doesn't have a filter. If you wanted to edit these, you could. And, um, you know, the filter should have had date. Date worked. This makes more sense if you actually have filters to use between. All right, so you can add filters on. Now I can say if I only want to see what I did, certain dates, right? Uh, today, oops, why did that not work? December to today. So did I even work? Okay, maybe I haven't worked in a while. And not, uh, there we go. Okay, billable time. All billable time. Okay, so whatever you want to add filters for people to see. So you can add this graphs area. Um, this isn't what the call is for, obviously, today, but you can add new graphs. I think that by default, we just have, I did not add any of these graphs. So I would say that by default, we have like time per week, hours, services, whatever you see on here. I must not have any hours by service year to date because I've done nothing. Um, <laughs> but these will be by default. And then if you're interested, we do have a couple of webinars that are on how to create graphs. So you might want specific graphs for people to be able to see, not just for the creatives graphs, but for any graphs we have, um, just go into the support.workamajig.com and type in webinars and look for the ones that say graphing. And we do have the ability to do the creative graphs. I think mostly on the calls that we do the PM graphs and now we have the salesperson graphs, right? So we try to make, I think there's billing graphs and owner's graphs too, billing graphs. So all the places for graphs. So you're only, they're very specific. So the creatives are only gonna see graphs that are pertaining to their information. This is the data set isn't going to give them creative graphs that tell you about billing, right? So it makes sense that the creative graphs are going to be, they are what they are, but you can always add more. If you are planning on making your own graphs, just quickly, you know, you're going to go edit and then you're going to give, you're going to be given what data set that you want to add to this. So this is a whole column of itself. So for sure, they're super fun. If you're visual, they're awesome and you can make all kinds of graphs without limitations, you know, we have like you can wait pages and pages and make these bigger and smaller if you want them to. You're able to even like drag. Well, if you knew how to drag, you can make things bigger. If I needed a bigger one, right? I don't know why I would need that to be bigger, but I needed to see that. Pi, super big. <laughs> All right. Um, one more minute. Uh, can you edit to show their allocations for the current week? I think you can. I think it's just one of the edits and you can say by week. It's just a filter. Um, one more minute. Any other questions? I'm super happy that there was so many of you guys here today. I'm so, and I do apologize for being late. Not that I was late. I just was actually accessing the wrong account, <laughs> which was my bad. But thank you all again. And um, I hope to see you on another webinar. I think there is going to be an advanced webinar and the same thing, I think, uh, either next week or the week after that David's going to be doing and going to take you into some more details. So stay tuned for that one. This is kind of the um, entry level for customizations, and he's going to take you into some more advanced ones next time. All right. Thank you. I'm signing off now. Have a good day. Bye-bye.